To date, there is a plethora of treatments for intertrigo, meaning there are so many treatments available or interventions that we as clinicians could do or advise our patients. However, the question is, are these evidence-based? Unfortunately, at this time, I must say that the evidence is weak to all these interventions. I use Solar as my search engine and search the database of scientific literature from 2000 to 2023, and there is one systematic review of available scientific studies, including randomized controlled trials, and the authors concluded that there is no evidence at all about the prevention of intertrigo and there is no firm evidence about its treatment. Uh, we're talking about all the treatments that we do today. As of this time, no well-designed clinical trials to support the treatment we use to treat this condition today. The treatment of intertrigo relies on common sense or what we call the common sense approaches and uh, also uh, based on expert opinions because little evidence supports or there is little evidence that supports the commonly used approaches that we employ today knowing the contributing factors including friction moisture and warmth and secondary infection is a key to treatment after watching part one of this video and the statements i have made in here we can then say that there are four critical causes of damage namely moisture friction bacteria and fungus moisture gets trapped within the skin folds and beneath devices where air circulation is limited. Overly hydrated stratum corneum, which that is the uh, most superficial part of your epidermis, does not glide on opposing skin surfaces leading to friction dam damage. Macerated skin becomes inflamed and denuded, providing a breeding ground for bacteria to grow. Lastly, fungus may develop on macerated, inflamed, denuded skin. The use of common sense is a good tool to have, knowing it's a pressure. For example, uh, the key is the treatment or the relief of the pressure. Another example is when you're treating a venous ulcer, the key to treatment is treating the absence of overwhelming evidence. What, what are we going to do? Are we just sit down and do not treat and let the condition get worse? Uh, ladies and gentlemen, let me remind you that there are different levels of evidence. They have level 1, level 2, level 3, level 4, and so forth. And there are also uh, three pillars of evidence, which is uh, the scientific literature, the uh, expert opinion of the patient of, of the clinician or the experiences of the clinician have you treated this before it is did your uh, treatment work or did not work or the patient personal personal circumstances do they want the treatment do are they responding well to treatment and so forth in this case <clears throat> common sense in combination with multiple case studies in actual clinicians experiences and successes of treating this condition is the evidence by itself at this point i can help but to talk about a product that i use to address the four causative factors that we just men mentioned i am referring to this product we call it interdry this is a moisture wicking fabric with antimicrobial silver Again, I must say that the antimicrobial effect of silver in the, in the wound base is still very controversial. Before, uh, before I delve further on interdry, let me say that treatments such as antifungal powders, creams, and absorptive materials target only one or two of the causes of intertrigo. For example, antifungals only target the fungus but fail to address bacterial growth and does not reduce friction and move friction away from the skin. 
the interdry wicks and translocates moisture away from the skin with 100% fabric. The polyurethane uh, coating reduces friction. It enhances bacteria and fungus. Let me say that again. It fights bacteria and fungus with its uh, claimed antimicrobial silver in the fabric. <clears throat> in my experience, the average resolution of the symptoms of intertrigo is 5 to 7 days. In some case studies uh, available in the literature, the average resolution of symptoms with interdry is 5 days. Where in the How does interdry really work? If you notice in this illustration, the skin is flooded with moisture. This moisture uh, favors the overgrowth of microorganisms. With the application of interdry, the, the cloth wicks out or translocate the moisture from the skin to the fabric. And once it does that, it releases the silver ions that will be released back to the skin and it will interact with the cell wall or the cell membrane of the microorganisms making them vulnerable to breakage thereby achieving microbial control where in the body could you apply interdry you can apply it on the neck roll axilla the inframammary region of the breast, the back, the abdomen, and any other uh, parts of the body when there is skin folds. Especially if you are treating a patient with lymphedema, you will have a lot of those skin folds. You can also use this to manage skin damage between any skin to device application where the skin is still intact, such as the trach ties, cervical collar, blood pressure cups, central lines, slings, heel suspension devices, and compression garments. By the way, you should not use this product on an open wound. How to apply? To apply interdry fabric for intertrigo treatment, clean and dry the affected area thoroughly. Pat dry and do not rub. Cut the fabric to fit the skin fold, ensuring it covers the entire affected area, leaving a minimum of two inches exposed to maximize its wicking ability. Place the fabric in the fold, securing it with medical tape if needed. Change the fabric every three to five days or as recommended by your wound care specialist. Do not use cream, powder, or ointment with interdry. Consult a healthcare professional for personalized advice. Uh, no prescription is required, so just gently separate the skin fold and clean with with uh, normal sala, uh, normal in in my in our clinic. Uh, I use Vash solution to cleanse the areas. Uh, like what I said, if infected, you can use uh, in antimicrobial solutions uh, that you, that you want. You have to pat dry with a rubbing. Then after that you. Cut the fabric to cover affected areas within minimum of two inches of fabric to, to be exposed outside of the skin fold to allow moisture evaporation. As we're approaching the end of this video, there is one randomized controlled trial that is worth mentioning here, where authors uh, conducted a double-blinded study to compare the efficacy of adsorbent lotion containing herbal and natural ingredients against low uh, corticosteroid creams in the treatment of intertrigo. Let me just give you a background that uh, steroid creams is one of the uh, treatments for this condition that um, 
physician usually prescribe. However, uh, you can control the inflammation with the steroids, but you could also enhance the growth of candida or fungus. So uh, they are trying to see if uh, using a different approach to manage the inflammation would work. So others have concluded that the anti-inflammatory efficacies of adsorbent lotion and the low potency steroid that we use today were equivalent. The lotion was safe and uh, produced um, excellent uh, control of pruritus as well. So the patient satisfaction is also very high. They are suggesting that instead of using uh, topical steroids, then you can use this type of product. So another take home message that I want to point out today in this video is that there are some interventions that we employ today which are not evidence based. Meaning to say that um, uh, there are some treatment that uh, we do like say for example in the treatment of intertrigo for example, um, there is no overwhelming literature that supports it. For some of us who spent a part of our adult life studying uh, evidence-based practice, we know, truth be told, that there are some limitations of EBP or limitations of evidence-based practice. Like in the case of the treatment of intertrigo, as long as you know the pathophysiology and the causative factors, the etiologic factors, I rely, personally, I rely on what I know. What I know is that warmth, moisture, friction, and overgrowth of microorganism um, are the causative factors or etiologic factors for intertrigo. Now, if I will be able to manage or my treatment are targeted to the pathophysiology and to the causative factors of the condition and the condition results that is the evidence by itself my point is that we have to uh, uh, be as evidence-based as possible but in the absence of evidence in the scientific literature it doesn't mean there's no evidence because you know what we have a patient to take care of. Thank you very much. And I hope you learned something today. If you did, please do not forget to share, like, and subscribe.